In this section, you will learn how to perform the manometry study. Instruct the patient to sit on the procedure couch facing you. Anesthetize both nostrils using 10% lignocaine spray. Instruct the patient not to blow the nose. They may wipe the nose if the solution leaks out. It is safe to swallow the solution. Hold the catheter in your dominant hand and place it on a gauze swab held by the assistant. Instruct the assistant to apply a lubricating gel onto the probe. Insert the esophageal probe into one nostril similar to inserting a nasogastric tube. Flexing the neck and or asking the patient to repeatedly swallow may facilitate the insertion. The catheter flexibility depends on the way it is held. The catheter will have a gentle curve when held at a particular direction. When rotated 180 degrees on its axis, it will be straight. By rotating the catheter on its axis, you can make it curved or straight. You will need to insert the catheter until you see both the upper and lower esophageal sphincters as pressure bands. Note the level at the external nares. Then ask the patient to change to the supine position. There is a significant difference in the pressure topography between seated and supine swallows. If the Chicago classification is to be used in reporting, supine swallows are therefore recommended. The assistant will maintain the catheter in the correct position by holding it at the external nares. Alternatively, you can use a plaster to secure the catheter to the patient's face. Click the next button to start the recording. A red line will appear at the top of the recording window, indicating that data recording has begun. Instruct the patient to swallow any sputum that has collected in the mouth and refrain from swallowing coughing or speaking thereafter. Click the next button to record the sphincter ID recording which takes 30 seconds. Once the recording is over, ask the patient to swallow any collected sputum. Fill 5 milliliters of saline into the patient's mouth using a syringe. Provide the following instructions to the patient. Swallow the entire volume of water when instructed. Swallow once only. Do not attempt to speak, cough or swallow again until instructed. Repeat this for a total of 10 swallows if following the Chicago classification for reporting. There are also significant differences in the distal latency and distal contractile intragur when using liquid and solid swallows. The integrated relaxing pressure is not affected. If the Chicago classification is to be used, liquid swallows are therefore recommended. After 10 satisfactory swallows have been recorded, remove the catheter and allow it to hang free for a few seconds. Then end the data collection. It is important to ensure 
that the probe is not in contact with any object during this period. This is necessary for the thermal compensation during the review of the study. Now let's look at a complete procedure of esophageal manometry. Before beginning esophageal manometry, anesthetize the nose by spraying it with lignocaine. Advise the patient that it is safe to swallow this liquid and to wipe it if it leaks out, but not to blow their nose. You need to allow a minute or two for the anesthetic to work. Lubricate the catheter using a water-based gel. Advise the patient to bend their head at the neck. Gently insert the catheter until you see the pressure landmarks. If there is difficulty in advancing the probe, you can advise the patient to swallow. You can confirm the position of the catheter by looking at the pressure landmarks. Note the level of the catheter at the external nares because you need to enter that into the software. Advise the patient to change to the supine position. The assistant can maintain the catheter position and ensure it does not move during swallows. You can also use a plaster to secure it to the patient's face. Advise the patient not to swallow and record a window of 30 seconds. It is often easier to visualize without the impedance during the recording. Use a syringe to give patient water in alicots of 5 milliliters to swallow. Advise the patient to swallow it once and then not to talk or swallow. If you use the Chicago classification for reporting, you need 10 swallows. Once 10 satisfactory swallows have been recorded, Remove the catheter.
allow it to hang freely for 2 seconds after removal to use for thermal compensation. To analyze the study, double click on the Manowim ISO icon to run the software. Select the study you want to analyze. Zoom into the study by clicking the magnifying glass icon. An appropriate level of zoom would be where each 20 second swallow would occupy most of the viewing window. Go to the end of the study by clicking the last portion of the timeline. Select a segment where the catheter has been completely withdrawn, indicated by no high pressure areas, and this is the last part of the recording where the catheter was held outside of the body while the recording continued. Move the red line to the chosen area and click on Tools and then select Set Thermal Compensation. When the catheter is outside the body, it records the atmospheric pressure while the sensors are at body temperature immediately after being removed from the body. Therefore, the system uses these values to remove any artifacts of solid state sensors. The image on the left shows the artifacts before thermal compensation. And the image on the right shows the pressure recording after thermal compensation has been applied. When setting the sphincter IDs, identification will be easier if the impedance recording is hidden by clicking the Show Hide Z. Double click on the green recording indicating the sphincter landmark ID recording. Set the upper esophageal sphincter markers so that the two black lines are on either side of the high pressure zone. There are two lines indicating the upper and lower extent of the lower esophageal sphincter. These are indicated by numerical values only. Move them to either side of the lower esophageal sphincter. Move the LES marker to the middle of the lower esophageal sphincter. The upper and lower markers indicate the extent of the lower esophageal sphincter. Move the pressure inversion point or PIP marker to the bottom of the screen and gradually move it upwards. A new window will appear showing three pressure lines in blue, red and green. The blue line will gradually go up and then suddenly come down. When it comes down, it will cross the green line to form multiple diamonds. Leave the PIP marker at that level. The pressure inversion point indicated the level at which the positive pressure inside the abdominal cavity transits into the negative pressure inside the thoracic cavity. The diamonds are created when the pressure of the blue line drops to negative inside the thorax and crosses the green line which remains positive inside the abdomen. When all three lines are in the abdomen, they indicate a positive value because the positive intra-abdominal pressure. Here you can see the diamonds formed by the blue and the green lines when the pressure inversion point has been set at the correct level.
move the gastric line to below the loesophageal sphincter. Review each swallow to ensure the automatic recognition of landmarks are accurate. Each swallow should be categorized as intact, weak or failed. Only swallows that are sufficiently intact to permit the analysis should be evaluated using distal latency, contractile front velocity and distal contractile integral. Once all the swallows have been assessed, click on the report button. Review the findings and the Chicago classification. Additional comments can be added to the appropriate text boxes.